so i'll be taking you to the journey from basics to the recent controversies regarding the dietary fats uh, my disclosures but nothing particular about this topic this is david kessler author of the end of the overeating taking control of insatiable american appetite and what he said we are hardwired to hunger for fatty sugary salty foods because back when our ancestors were foraging for every meal palatable eats meant extra energy and a leg up survival this is the dr david kessler do any one of these look good i think this is a lunch time and i don't want to show this much of time so what is fat in the greek lipos is a fat lipids actually are regarding the organic uh, substances relatively insoluble in water and we know this thing very well but and they are soluble in organic solvents and potentially related to fatty acids and utilized by the living cells this is the fat it is not polymer mostly they are very very small molecules and they constitute about 15 to 20% of our body weight fat has a lot of function in our body if you see it is a source of energy vehicle for soluble vitamins otherwise we will be having a deficiency of most of the vitamins if we don't have the good uh, amount of the fat in our diet it supports viscera it actually acts as a insulation palatability is always with the fat not with the other uh, th uh, other uh, proteins and uh, carbohydrates it we require fat for the growth the structural integrity of the cell membrane and it decreases the platelet adhesiveness these are the all the roles of fat on the other side we need fat for vascular homeostasis kidney functions secretion in stomach gastrointestinal motility lung physiology reproduction and what not we need fat for all these functions but yes it is a concentrated source of energy and we know that every uh, gram of fat contains 9 calories so that is the, the the fact so what we used to think these days and even little earlier in last decades dietary advice was based on premise that high intake of fat cause obesity diabetes heart disease maybe cancer dear friends this is the paper published by ludwig in science you can understand and they have actually potentially asked the questions regarding the dietary fat it is from foe to friend don't think every time the fat is a foe it is not a foe it is a friend and you have to actually choose your friend uh, uh, very meticulously that is the important point in 1977 actually this all debate starts in us when the us senate reports and recommends to all the us citizens that they should reduce the uh, consumption of total and saturated fat and later on in 1988 surgeon general's report they are not medical people even senate and surgeon general says that uh, reduction of fat consumption as a primary dietary priority this was the actually in 1977 and 1988 more so not even in us even our indian diet has much of issues because we are taking too much of carbohydrates too little proteins high invisible fat every grains and other things have invisible fats saturated fats and total fat that is the, the reality and very poor omega 3 omega 6 ratio that is again a very very important issue in our indian diet and it is a fibropenic hardly we take uh, fibers in the form of salads fruits vegetables so what are the evidences in favor of low fat <coughs> and high carbohydrate diet what earlier it, uh, the the facts were 
humans preferentially oxidize carbohydrates over the fat. That is the first point. A process that helps to maintain a blood glucose within homeostatically, homeostatically controlled or uh, ranges. That is the first thing, oxidizing the, the carbohydrates. That is the important thing. And of course, fat is a very highly palatable and may have a weak effect on satiation. That is, again, fat has very, so how much amount of fat you can take, but satiation, we don't have any satiety, potentially leading to passive overconsumption, and if not coupled with increased energy expenditure results in weight gain. That is the the basics, why we take too much of fat. And diet rich in whole grains, which are low in fat and have a relatively low glycemic load, promote satiety and reduce overconsumption. Hence, uh, I think uh, possibility by increasing the concentration of GLP-1 after eating. So that is the points in favor of low fat and high carbohydrate. What are the facts in favor of high fat and low carbohydrate? A dietary carbohydrate is replaced by fat. The postprandial spikes, that is the basic thing, the postprandial spikes in the blood uh, glucose concentration uh, and insulin reduces, glucagon secretion increases, and metabolism shifts to a greater reliance of fat oxidation. So that is the point the in favor of high fat and low carbohydrate. But dear friends, views have changed now. Fats are an important part of healthy diet. Eating a very low fat diet is not good for us. And of course, what is good food and good fat and bad fat, I'll, I'll take you to now. So these are our new friends. It's a, I have already told you, it supports cell growth, energy, source of energy, it absorbs nutrients and of course regulate hormones. This is the very re recently published papers, uh, I mean in 2017 by uh, Malotra and what it says, saturated fat, fat does not clog the arteries. Coronary artery disease is a chronic inflammatory condition, the risk of which can be effectively reduced from healthy lifestyle intervention. This is a paper published in, again uh, in the, the, the British Journal of Sports. So dear friends, there are several pleiotropic effects of uh, the low carbohydrate and high fat diets. Fat is actually needed for the substrate oxidation. Anabolic signaling in adipose tissues is required. Postprandial oxidative stress and inflammation uh, reduction, we require uh, the fats. And of course, various metabolic uh, syndrome components, uh, the fat is actually needed. And of course, for ketone uptake, brain and heart muscles, that is important. Beta hydroxybutyric acid signaling, for this also we need the fat. And for reactive oxygen species, membranes, highly unsaturated fatty acids. And of course, it is anti seizure and neuroprotective. That is again an important thing. And of course, for insulin, hormone sensitivity and appetite uh, reduction, we require the fat. And this is what is done in a day-to-day -day basis. There is a, whenever we take food, the energy balance deviates. And if your energy balance is normal, you have adipose tissue hyperplasia, uh, I mean, it is increases, then you have the adipose tissue hyperplasia, normal angiogenesis, normal adipogenesis, small insulin sensitive adipocytes, and ultimately it leads what Dr. Shashank has told us, the metabolically healthy obesity. But if it is in the other direction, then of course everything is opposite. The adipocyte hypertrophy takes place, there is inadequate vascularization, increases the hypoxia, apoptosis, increases adipose tissue stress, increases the immune cell infiltration, and increases neurosis and fibrosis. And the result is increasing ectopic fat. And that leads to metabolically unhealthy obesity. So the fatty acids, what are the fatty acids? 
uh, they are, we know that they are saturated and unsaturated, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. And the saturated fat means there is no double bond. And basically they are all animal fats, these saturated fats. And of course, like butter, breast milk, the uh, dairy products and meat, they all contain the, the saturated fats. What is monounsaturated fatty acid? It has a single double bond. If you see here in the structure, single double bond is there. And that's why this is monounsaturated fat. And of course, we have these type of olive oil, canola, grapeseed oil, they are all MUFA. And what is MUFA? Polyunsaturated fats, they are a more than one double bond. They are protective against the insulin resistance and protects from cardiovascular disease. All evidences are there. And of course, more vulnerable for the lipid peroxidation, mostly found in vegetable oils except the, uh, the fish oils. And <coughs> based on position, they are different N3, N6, N9, etc. And like ALA, alpha linolenic acid, Ecosa pentanoic acid, Docasa hexanoic acid, they are all the varieties of omega-3 fatty acids. And actually, we require omega-3 fatty acids for various functions. And of course, omega-6 fatty acids, this is the first double bond from methyl and exists as a 6 cc bond. And we have the linolenic acid, aricodenic acid, and uh, DGLA. These are all the, the, the N6 fatty. So we require both N6 and N3. But the ratio is very, very important. And if you see the ratio, if the ratio is less than 4 is to 1, this is very good for our endothelial cells as well as the beta cells. But if the ratio is more than 10, then it is not a good thing. And if you what dietary oils we are taking, if you see here, we have a very poor month's oil that is mustard oil has the best omega-6, omega-3 ratio. And I think this is very good for our uh, endothelial cells of the coronary arteries as well as the beta cells. They are very, very sensitive to the omega-6, omega-3 ratio. But on the other hand, trans fatty acids, what are the trans fatty acids? They are the geometrical isomers of the unsaturated, uh, cis unsaturated fatty acids. So this is the actually, and why the, it was developed? They are developed because uh, partial hydrogenation used to increase the shelf life of the PUFA. That's why these trans fats developed. That's why we know all the packaging chips and everything, they contain the, the trans fats. And that is, if you see here, the trans fats are everywhere. And actually, they, they, they preserve actually as a, uh, and increases the shelf life of the fat. Third thing, other than the choice of the food, the cooking of food is, a uh, fat is very, very important. And cooking, how we do the cooking in our kitchen, that is again important. And first thing is the regard, regarding the refining. Refined oils, they deplete most of the nutrients. They are the source of oxygen-free radicals. More of the trans fatty acids and contains the, the size of lipoproteins always de uh, A is de reduced uh, and it decreases the insulin secretion. On the other hand, the frying, what we are doing the frying. So for the frying, which oil is good? It depends on the smoking point of that good, uh, of that oil. So if the high smoking point uh, oil is there, they are very, very good. And two things I want to tell you, dear friends, reheating of the oil and reuse of the oil. And what we do in the morning, most of the, our uh, mothers and they do, they, they actually, they use the leftover oil. And what the leftover oil does, the grains which are present in the, the leftover oil and when, when reheated, it develops the VDP, that is volatile decomposition products and the chemical known as acrolein. So whenever we reheat and reuse this oil, we actually consume more, consume more these VDPs and acrolein. And ultimately it irritates our gut and there are no evidences as present, but few studies, anecdotal studies, they say that it may lead to chronic use of VDPs lead to the colon cancer also. All fats are equal. If you see this study, very elegant study, 
and this says that on the uh, this side the change to the total mortality and incremental energy from the specific type of the fat and if you see here the trans fats has the highest mortality saturated fat next monounsaturated fat next and polyunsaturated fat in the last so you have to use judiciously what type of use and uh, what type of oil it is very very important so that is the important thing and we have certain uh, studies meta analysis which says that the pufas n3 pufas especially if you see here the they are all hazard ratio if you see here this is shift to left so cardiovascular disease mortality and even total mortality concern if you see here these are good oils and trans fat is a very very bad oil because it is hydrogenated and if you see here the type 2 diabetes incidence also have this type of uh, studies and all the fats are related to diabetes incidence of diabetes and especially this polyunsaturated and in total fats and dear friend this is my almost last that the lifestyle intervention so it is a holistic what shashank has told just now it is a holistic approach so don't have to actually choose the or blanketly redu, uh, say to our patient that diet mein fat nahi lena hai don't do like this and if you see here the high fat mediterranean diet here and what contains the vegetables extra virgin oil nuts oily fish moderate intake of cheese and yogurt low in sugar and refined carbohydrate this is a mediterranean right even our indian diet is near to that particular thing and if we combine this thing with the regular exercise yog stress reduction and smoking suggestion if we combine this uh, diet with this uh, exercise then we can think of the reducing the systemic inflammation and insulin resistance so some fats are good some fats are bad controversies are always there but consensus says that replacement of saturated fat with naturally occurring unsaturated fat provides health benefits to the general population so that is the first and foremost thing why i am here industrially produced the trans fats are the most harmful and should be eliminated from our food that is the and especially to our children the young children are always taking trans fats in the form of these packaging chips and everything metabolism of saturated fat may differ <coughs> from carbohydrate restricted diet and issue that requires a study of course we have published few studies on omega 6 omega 3 fatty acids in our diet in around 10000 patients and we have published this study already people with insulin resistance hypersecretion of insulin glucose intolerance may benefit from low carbohydrate and high fat diet but choose the fat that is important thing and of course i don't want to give here which type of diet is good but ketogenic diet may confer particular metabolic benefits of some people with abnormal carbohydrate metabolism a possibility that requires again a long term study and we can do in a pan india study of these type of things thank you very much